Hello and welcome to SaxWorks. SaxWorks is a new membership club for life and work and wellness and self-actualization and meeting friends and getting it done and getting yourself ready for 2022 because that's really actually kind of close right now. So we are very lucky today to have Ron Passaro here, a crack web developer, to talk about how to optimize your website uh, and your website and your website and your website and your website for going into the new year. My name is Rachel Sklar. I'm the VP of Programming and Content here at Saxworks. So happy to welcome you all to this beautiful space for one of our many wonderful signature leadership luncheons where we have invigorating conversations as well as practical skills developing and servicey talks, which is what we're going to be doing today with Ron. Uh, Ron, who is a close friend of Saxworks, uh, here for much of our programming, and today is going to be taking on the role of getting us ready to be the best version of ourselves in 2022, because you can be amazing, and I know you are, but if your website is kind of janky, and it has, uh, it says not secure at the top, like it's, it loads really slowly, these are all tells uh, that you're not showing yourself to be as awesome as you actually are. Uh, Ron is here to optimize that. Um, welcome, Ron. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I, I guess today the goal is to demystify a few things about website design, uh, talk about best practices, and, and just give some tips about how you can go at it on your own, or if you're working with a developer, what are some things you should know before you dive in with an agency or a developer. So well, what is it's like the be, first yeah. thing? Like, what's the first thing I'm coming to you and say, hi, Ron, nice to meet you. Yeah. Please make me, make me look amazing on the internet. What is your first, what do you say to me? I mean, okay, if we're going to go just right into that about if I am a developer and I'm going to work with a client, the client, I would hope, has an idea of what they want to say as far as what their website needs to portray and show visitors. And they need to have at least an idea aesthetically of what they're looking for. So if I meet a client and they don't have any references to show me online, out of all the millions of websites, billions of websites, they're not sure what they want their site to look like, I would urge them to take a little time, find something that speaks to them, to whatever their line of work is or what they're trying to if it's just a purely for fun site, find something at least in the ballpark of that and come to me and say, I like this or I don't like this aspect of it. But if I don't have a jumping off point, then that can just lead to a, a tough collaboration. And, uh, and that's basically because neither of us have the information we need to build a site that's gonna make that client happy. Okay, so just even just best practices, even for starting, if you're working with someone on a website, is to have a few uh, points of reference and examples to work from. Should they also have good photos? Should they have like all their links lined up? Like, what are the things that you? What are you like? This is a dream client. Thank you so much. We can do this in 24 hours. Yeah, I, I don't want to oversell. 48 hours. I mean, there are elements of a website that every site should have, right? So you need to have a home page that is going to immediately give the visitor information about who this person or this company is and what they are offering the world. Why does this website exist? What are you trying to tell us? Is there an about page? There should be one if you have enough information for about information on a separate page and just a hint of that on the home page. Um, a contact, right? How are we going to get in touch with you? And then what images do we want? If it's a website for a person, we would hope to have pretty good images of that person. Uh, a lot of times when I'm working on setting up a, a build, they're in the process of doing a photo shoot. And so they'll give me information about what they're thinking about. And I will say, here's what you can do when you're going in for a photo shoot to make sure I have everything I need for that site. And a quick example, just photo shoot wise, you want to have some imagery in a portrait, right? Portrait mode, and then you want to have it landscape with maybe you off to the side, right? Because that gives me flexibility to put you on a heading and have some text to the left or the right of you. 
and uh, I don't have to mess around with any kind of cropping or anything like that because we've already got the, the layout that we want and I can work with that. Um, you want to have indoor and outdoor pictures, for example. Uh, you want to have some looking at the camera. You want to have some candid, like, you know, could be just working or laughing or it could be you doing what you are selling, right? So if you're a speaker, it would be great to have some shots of you speaking. Exactly. If you are a composer, uh, you at the piano. Ron, Ron is also a composer. That's, okay. I guess, a plug. Whatever it may yeah. be. You know, a lot of I do artist sites or trainers, right? Like if you're a trainer, I would hope that you're not posing in a suit for all of your photos. Like you should be doing what you say you're doing, essentially. And we see that this is, you know, if we go back to what is the point of a website today, right? If we just jump back to we have social, we have all of these things. Why do we have a, a website? It's to, A, give credibility and legitimacy to what you say that you do. If you say that you're a trainer, I would like to go to your website and say, oh, wow, this person has a studio in the Union Square area. They've been training for five years. And, I w and they probably have some galleries of them working with clients. Client sort testimonials. Of Testimonials are huge, right? So on your home page, throw a testimonial on there. If you have enough, have a testimonials page. And the other option is why not pepper testimonials on every page? Have a heading and then a testimonial, content testimonial. You can do that on every page of your site. So instead of having maybe a testimonial page that nobody's gonna bother clicking on, you've added and woven these amazing testimonials through the content that they're looking for anyway. Can I just say um, uh, one other reason too that we've talked about to have a website is um, SEO, right? So if someone Googles you, you have control over what comes up. Yeah. Um, just in case you never know when you're gonna, there's going to be an unflattering photo or mention on, the, on that internet, on God's green internet. Um, but uh, as well, it's, a, it's about platform control because um, you know, you spoke before about having, like, people have Instagram, people have Facebook, why do you yeah. need a website? Well, do you, who is going to own your platform when you are on Instagram, when you're on Facebook, right. when you're on some of these other lesser known networks? Um, look at the fine print. You don't own your platform. So, yeah. it's another reason. I just, I'm Well, and you know, <laughs> you can have a, a lot of social platforms, they're going to link to a link tree, and that you can have some information there. But more than not, you know, that, again, the website is going to help you control your narrative. It's going to give people an explanation as to why you have 78,000 followers on Instagram. Uh, we may have a general idea, but I'd like to learn more about who this person is. Do they offer speaking? Can I get them? How do I contact them? You know, not everybody wants to be or should be DM'd via that. So you set up a contact page that may go to an agent or an agency that's handling booking stuff like that or capturing emails you know so all of that like you're talking about like if somebody even if you're using a platform to send a newsletter or if you're using mainly social any of that goes or you get banned from that for whatever reason you never know there's been so many we live in a in an age now where it, it, nothing's surprising right and nothing's guaranteed. So what a lot of people are doing, and that I definitely support, and I just hit my mic, so sorry about that, um, is to build your own mailing list. If you have people come to your website, have them opt in and make it enticing. Say like, you know, if you're a trainer, uh, get my tips for whatever it may be that you think that your target audience in training, it could be so wide, right? If it's mainly guys looking to build up their upper body, you can give them the five things that you've learned to build a, a upper chest or whatever. Anything that's going to get them signed up because email still is king, right? You can get sponsored with your newsletter so you can make money on that. You can do affiliate marketing, marketing on that. And you can also eventually uh, sell your own courses and have a loyal following that you can reach out to via email. So even in this day of all of these options, Email is still, if not the king, like it's a very important thing for any company or individual, frankly, to, 
to have. Okay, so you've made a strong case for the continued relevance of websites yeah. in our fast-paced world. Um, so let's, um, can we look at a, a few examples of, um, of what you like? Like what, uh, uh, we can talk about platforms, like do you, you like to build on WordPress, Squarespace, what what do you recommend? Yeah, sure. And then we can we can branch out into um, more specialized things like um, building your shop on Shopify or uh, what have you. And that's all I got. Yeah, of You're course. You're the expert. Um, you know, even somebody like if I I'll use the screen. I was just looking at this earlier today, right? But if you take somebody, for example, like Andrea, Maya. What about Gary? Right? I what did not build Gary? this site. I did not work for or with Gary, uh, but here's a guy that knows all things social, right? But why does he have a website then? The website allows you to get more information if I go to his homepage, right? You get a snapshot of what he's the chairman of, the co-founder here. What is he doing here? He's asking you immediately to subscribe to a newsletter. He's not asking you to follow him anywhere. The first thing you see is subscribe, right? Then you get a little, this is what I was talking about, you can have a small little teaser about on the home page, and then you'll see he has a link where you can learn more about him, right? So these are all important things to have on your home page. You have uh, some logos with various called the logo wall or logo area. And then here is all, all of his platforms. This is very hard to understand everything from his Insta or from his YouTube or from his Facebook, you can get a snapshot, but on his website, you can get an idea of the overall ecosystem that is Gary, right? So do you want to follow, you didn't know he had a Twitter, he has a Twitter. What is I his favorite Instagram uh, probably knew platform? he had a Twitter. Yeah. yeah, his favorite or his biggest platform is Insta, and he tells you it is right here. So we're learning I things about 9 him. I believe 9.4 million uh, yeah. followers. And right here on the homepage, we have a convenient contact form, right? and upcoming events. This is also good, right? So if you're a speaker. Oh, this is actually a really good yeah. point. Do you think this is June 17th, 2022? Yeah, or I do. 2020? Okay, yeah. you, you think there's no way that somebody like just left that hanging. So this is just a good point. If this was 2021, it's always good to keep your website updated because I actually do see quite a number, right here, especially right? with the pandemic, you have people who have like their speaking engagements or like upcoming gigs or whatever for like, you know, something painful like September 2020. And you know, you, like, it is important. People do look, people do see. I am the last person, by the way, to be calling this out because I am terrible about updating my own stuff and I do not even have a functioning website of my own because I am not the person who comes to Ron with all of those things established. But um, yeah, I'm, we'll check that after. Yeah. Either you missed Gary in Bucharest, or you can see him in Bucharest. Oh no, and we actually put it up on, and it showed 2022. Oh so, God! Like, okay. If we go like right Never here. Never doubt Gary V. I'm there you so go. sorry, Gary. Oh, okay, there you go. There you go. Okay, so again, a way to control the narrative and a way to get all the different things you want to share with people. Believe it or not, there are people that do not know who Gary is, and so you go to his website and you can learn a little bit about him. Um, can I ask and, you a question? Can of you course. tell just from um, looking at this what kind of website, like what it's built on? I, I would guess that this is WordPress, but I can confirm that. WP Content, so it's a WordPress website. And then we can dig on what theme this was built on perhaps, and uh, any of the plugins that he's using, all of that stuff. So should we shift to platforms yes. really quick? Yeah, let's yeah. do that. So I tend to like to specialize in less platforms than more. So I would stick with developing or do stick with developing right now, WordPress and Squarespace both because they are established, well-known, reliable entities and entities that I have worked with now for years. So while Squarespace might be something that is considered more of a do-it-yourself platform, there's a lot of customization that can be done if you know a little coding. And I found that a lot of people sometimes have difficulty just even getting certain things to look the way they want it to with the drag and drop 
And so I would come in and kind of tweak that for them and then make sure that they can update their site moving forward. And one thing that I really like about Squarespace is that you pay one monthly or annual fee and everything is included. You don't have to worry about a page builder. You don't have to worry about hosting. You don't have to worry about security unless it's not something that you are responsible for. It's so something with, that... Yeah. So that security certificate thing where you look up in the top URL, the top left of the URL, and there's either a little padlock or it says not secure. Right, like you'll if see you, it right up here. Okay. Right, yeah. this little padlock. Um, yeah, not only that, I'm talking even about server security, about you don't have to I worry know, about how, your site being hacked. Is that hacked. something that in space, that's just like a box you check? Or? It is something that is included. Okay. So you don't have to, like, it's very important actually these days. Your site will rank better. You, you will be uh, trusted more, obviously, if you don't have a big red thing showing up here or saying when not When you say not trusted secure. more, is that like trusted by search engines? Trusted yeah, by, trusted by yeah. search engines. It'll help your rankings and it will also not scare off visitors that come and say, why is this site not secure? Obviously, I'm not going to put in my credit card info. Obviously, I'm not going to log in to my cart or to my membership, right? Uh, if you're selling courses online, uh, if the site is not secure, it would be um, a turnoff, right? To, you're to probably them. thinking, anybody who knows what they're doing is obviously going to make sure their site is secure. I will, I will say there is a production company that produces websites that will go unnamed that we recently came across and we were both I was only horrified because Ron taught me this, but um, horrified to see that this actual web development company was itself on a not secure website. It's kind of like, it's a little bit of a tell. Yeah. More than a little bit of a tell. These are little things, you know, and it also about, um, well, continuing with the platform, WordPress allows you to build a way more robust site. And for that, you probably need a developer, even if you have a, what I like think it's called a WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get, page builder. You have plugins that need to be continuously updated. You have to make sure that those plugins are maintained by the developers. It's very common for a person or a company to create a beautiful plugin that everybody uses and then they're not making enough money or they go out of business or they do something else and that plugin is not maintained and becomes a vulnerability and sites get hacked through those plugins. So uh, like an example of that is like if there was like a super cool new calendar app plugin yeah. and then uh, the company lost its funding or whatever it was, there was a co-founder breakup, whatever, and they stopped updating it. Yeah. And then suddenly you realize I mean, your calendar is from 2015 and... Yeah, okay. not only will it be a hacking concern, but probably it'll start looking bad because it's not keeping up with HTML5 protocol or anything else or like the WordPress platform itself, right? WordPress is updating very regularly and eventually something's gonna break. Um, you have, again, way more control with how you want your site to look with WordPress. If you do a little kind of study of a page builder and know how to update your plugins and get a good hosting provider, totally something you can do on your own. Um, or you can have it handed over to you and you can be shown how to maintain your site from there on. But you want to make sure you have good hosting, right? There are bad hosting companies and uh, a lot of them don't even provide the little cert uh, SSL certificate. But other ones for WordPress such as WP Engine I highly recommend and SiteGround are two companies that are phenomenal and they automatically include 30 backups of your site over 30 days. So if you find out a weekend that you've been hacked, you can go eight days back and say, I want it restored to eight days ago, and it'll very quickly in a matter of minutes restore your site. Also, the security on those hosting providers are, are excellent, right? With something like Squarespace, you don't have to worry about hosting. You can build your site on your own. It's a one-off cost, right? So th that's becoming more and more appealing to clients and it's becoming more and more appealing to me because I can go to a client and say, I will build your site and then you have 100% control and peace of mind after that, right? As long as your site looks the way you want it to look 
I will show you how you can update it, maintain it, and you don't have to worry about security, you don't have to worry about an SSL certificate, you don't have to worry about adding your mailing newsletter, or whatever, there's integrations with that. So it's kind of uh, all in one, I just set it and forget it kind of deal. And actually I have one or two of them open here. Here is one that I actually just finished the other day. This is a, a, a trainer, a yoga teacher, and she wanted a friendly, fun kind of site. It just shows again on the home page. We kind of get an idea of what she's about. This does that, area, does that count as a hero? This is a hero image, right? And it's quite important. Also, everything that you see on your screen when a page loads is called above the fold. Right, so that's probably the most important area of your site that you want that to be a welcoming and helpful area, or it can be a distracting, weird, what's happening. Also, right? if it's loading one way on, on Chrome, on Firefox, on Safari, on right. mobile, it's a, on it's Lion. It's gotta be working on all, at least all the f like four major browsers, and then mobile, tablet, right? So if I shrink this down, oh, there I am. But then also you'll see on mobile, she does not disappear off to the side. The whole site is mobile friendly. And it loads very quickly. And it loads quickly, right? So Squarespace, this is a Squarespace that I customized. Uh, lightning fast servers. Can we talk about th those two things right at the bottom? Yeah, so of course. Scroll, scroll back down, two notes, right? Yep. Copyright 2021, very easy thing. If uh, your copyright is copyright for the year that you are not in, looks janky, if I may, no offense. Right, so a misconception really quickly on that, right? So a lot of people are like, no, well, the copyright is as of when I went into business or when I built the site. And that's actually correct. If you have a company or you built the website in 2014, the correct date is 2014 down there. However, it's kind of not understood and so when people go and see 2014, they have the wrong impression, and rightfully so, right? That this site has been abandoned and they can't even take the time to update the copyright in the footer. So I would always recommend two things. Either just update it to the year, because nobody cares, and we're in 2021, make it 2021. If you want to be 100% legit, you have the year that you copyrighted it or built the site or when you started the company or whatever and then have a dash to this year you'll see a lot of major companies do this in the footer it'll say copyright 2014-2021 right if you want to be a hundred percent accurate that would be what i would recommend if not don't just use that year even if it's like 2020 versus 2021 uh i always uh, get a red flag reaction with that, do 2021 or do 2020 2021. And um, privacy, what does it mean when someone says that? Okay, right, so if you're signing up for a newsletter, what are you, you're putting in an email address, what are you doing with that email address? The shorthand right now, uh, ideally we could add a privacy policy even, but I respect your privacy means I respect the fact that you're giving me your email address and I will not Throw it up on the World Wide Web. Sell it. And I will not sell it to third party platforms for whatever reason, right? I will not share this, right? So a lot of people also say, we will never share your email or we don't spam is another reassurance. But again, I respect your privacy. It kind of covers all of that. We will not bombard you with, with unsolicited stuff and you probably want to give them a little idea at least of what you're getting. I love to share things I find along the way. And we know that she likes to share running routes, she likes to share restaurants and her favorites, right? So I handed this site over with a lot of lorem ipsum. And I made sure to have a Zoom with her where I showed her here's how you update your info. So now I actually went here today and she's already, this all, all was lorem ipsum, and now you can see, wow, she's already put in her coaching information and pricing. And she is able, she's a perfect example of somebody now that has taken a website that was built by somebody else, but they have full control of the content. They can add in 
text information. Uh, they can change the wording on here. The site is now in their hands and they don't need me anymore unless there might be a new special page that they want built. So that's always the ideal for me is that I can say, you have the, king, the keys to your kingdom. I've built it. I've shown you how to use it. I've shown you everything you need to do to maintain it. Now you are 100% in control of your site as opposed to what was very popular years ago and is still happening where uh, a developer or an agency might try to rope you into a maintenance deal, a security protection program, where on WordPress that's a little bit more legit and I actually do that for certain clients where they absolutely have no idea how to log in or just don't want to and I'll handle it for them. But on something like Squarespace and general WordPress that people want to take the time for just half an hour and learn what do I need to do to make sure that uh, my site has will maintain its integrity over the next three years or so and I'll be able to show them that and they are completely in control of all of that hosting content domain you know I always tell them buy your own domain go create your own GoDaddy account buy your or own another, or another yeah, one. <laughs> own your own property is what it right. is like I don't want to be that person to be owning a domain on behalf of somebody so um, that's also a, a very important and ideal kind of situation. Um, can we talk a little bit about uh, like the, the more specified platforms? Like if you want to build on Shopify, you mentioned Kinjabi. Kin Kinjabi. Yeah. Right. Here's a, like, again, what's the reason for a website? And part of it can be, well, we are now in a digital world. We've had COVID. We're in a pandemic still. And so many people now are taking that opportunity to create online courses, online, build up a YouTube channel, build up a paid course offering, right? You start with one course and then build it out to three, to four, whatever it may be. And there are some platforms that are more tailored for that kind of operation, right? So if you're going to do Squarespace, you're probably going to want to use another platform like Thinkific or Kajabi or something to host your courses. If you're looking to build a store, which is another thing, right? A lot of people are now selling their creations online more than ever. Um, you can have your website and Squarespace has a commerce option. You can just pay a little more and you can build your store. You so can your build store on, on Squarespace is different than Shopify? Like all I know Absolutely. is that I will yeah. go shopping online and, and I'll sort of put in my information and, and then I'll get the, a code. And they'll be like, oh, and they'll be like, oh, we know you. Yeah. And I'll be like, oh, this is Shopify. Well, here's a very smart thing about using Shopify, for example. I believe if you've ever bought anything on Shopify, you can then check out on anybody else's Shopify a lot quicker because you're a I Shopify. I can concur on that. You're, you're already a member of the Shopify family, and it just makes it that much more convenient. So if you're using Joe's e-commerce solution, and you got to go through hoops to create your account, and all of that, eh, it can be a turnoff. But also, uh, is there um, is there an issue in terms of like these more established places being less vulnerable, vulnerable yeah. to? Absolutely to right. Down? So if you're looking to save money in the short term and say I just want to use X Y Z platform because it's five dollars a month versus fifteen, uh, if they don't have a track record. You know, and it's not something that's known even like, a, even if a developer says, I never really worked with them, all of these things should give you pause before moving forward. And just, I say, go for the established names. You pay a little bit more, but again, it's, there's fringe benefits and there's also peace of mind and security and all of that and long-term. Like if you take your business seriously, Make sure that you build it on a platform that is a, a major player in the space. So is Kajabi? Kajabi is one of the biggest for courses. Very expensive. There are other options. Again, you know, I'm only mentioning Kajabi because I just want to be able to ask if it gets the Kajabi done, right? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yes. Uh, very good. <laughs> Sorry. It actually does, but okay, you know, and, and it will, and it will, question. and it will. And you know, the nice thing about Kajabi too is that it has a lovely page builder. 
I've seen many people build their whole uh, online presence website wise on Kajabi. Because and, and it gets I'm so to, glad yeah. I asked. Let me, because um, we have a little bit of time here. Yeah. I'm not sure we're going to have questions. We'll save a little time for questions. People have them. But I just I wanted to do a, a lightning round yep. here about um, recommendations for, I feel like there's so much that we talked about in our pre-interview that I did not ask you about. But um, so we can do it in a lightning round. Like, um, what are recommendations if you're, if you're looking to build a community online? I know about Mighty Networks. I know about, you tell me. What are other, I mean, there's Facebook I mean, groups. But it, like, what, what, is the, what is the general goal, right? Like, I don't do you want to have, have a, you have a paid, paid membership community, right. right? You want something that's better than Facebook groups. Oh, Where okay, are you right, right. So there you go, right? So the default would be, I just need to set up somewhere that people can interact, Facebook group, right? Nothing wrong with that, but if it's not what you're, you want to build like a legitimate community and whatever, Mighty Networks, I mean, there's, that would be the one that I would start with because it gives you a lot of flexibility. You can pay for more of a kind of branded thing, but they also then, if you upgrade, you can customize it, you can white label it, meaning that you won't see the Mighty Networks logo or anything. Um, you know, stuff like that, I would think. I should disclose, I know the founder of Mighty Networks, because I feel like I'm like, a, I just mentioned that because it was the first thing that came to mind. But you also mentioned Brilliant, what was the one, the Brilliant one, remember? I think it's Brilliant Design or something. Yeah, I mean, you can, again, just look at what their funding is, look at how long they've been around read reviews, you know, like those, I think it's brilliant directories is brilliant what it is. Directories, yeah, brilliant one. directories, yep. highly recommended. And, uh, but I believe that you can get the job done for a little bit less with Mighty Networks and, and be totally good. I mean, the features in that platform alone is pretty, pretty wild. Like you'll, you'll need a tenth of them, and but you have them all yeah, at your disposal. We, I mean, uh, two night, we had two night, uh, a previous uh, event here at Saxworks, they're on Mighty Networks. The the list, which is a partner in events we're going to be having in 2022, also on Mighty Networks. So there's, um, I know Lovia J I is uh, is on Mighty yeah. Networks. Gold Comedy. There's a lot. There's a lot of great, uh, great, uh, great communities on Mighty. Um, what about if so? Have you mentioned Kajabi for courses? So you're someone you're like, I'm really smart. I would like to master class it up for Rachel Rachel's classes yeah. in how to be clearly amazing at websites. <laughs> so beyond Kajabi, what are some other options? Uh, Thinkific, like I mentioned. There's also some pretty good WordPress plugins that you can use that uh, allow you to build out courses. One that I like and that I build a lot of my WordPress sites on is uh, Thrive Themes. So they have a lot of, they have like a page builder and theme builder and all of that. And then they have plugins. They have a good lead generation plugin. They have a very good testimonial getting plugin. And they also have, they just are releasing 4.0 of this in a few days called uh, Thrive Apprentice. It's a WordPress plugin. It allows you to log in with your own account. You take the course, you uh, complete modules. You know, you're, you can see how far you've gone through the course. And it's all integrated into WordPress and it has payment gateways that you know you can pay with PayPal, Stripe, ThriveCart, which is an unrelated company but a very well known. Wait, stop. Cut. ThriveCart is not related to those other Thrive things. This That's whole right. time I didn't know that. Yeah, wow. no, they okay. are. It's a separate. This is why it's important to have uh, a very distinct name. Yeah. Like Saxworks. There's no confusion at all. But I'm just kidding. Um, we're part of the same family. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, okay, I highly, so like you can like- Thrive Card is separate than all those Thrive yeah, things. Yeah, Thrive themes still really also, that. if you just go to their website or Google uh, courses with them, they have a very good uh, just primer on everything online course related. So it'll tell you, here's how you come up with a concept for a course. Here's how you should name or think about naming your course. Here are best practices in pricing your course. And then from there, how do you build? How do you actually put together something that people can log into and and uh, and take, right? Uh, it's a wonderful business model these days. Can I ask, uh, do you have a, an example of one of your clients that um, is a, would be okay to share with us sort of the, that they're selling something on, like that's a membership platform? Like I, I feel like they're, Network yeah, I mean, be. so while I'm on this site very yeah. quickly, again, like above the fold information, right? You want, again, what's the purpose of a site? 
to let people know who you are and what you do very quickly, right? I lead organizations and individuals, blah, blah, blah. Very good. And again, if you go on mobile, you'll see that it will shift and change depending on what platform and device you're using. Um, Andrea's also a friend of Softworks. Dory Andrew. Clark is a very good example of someone that has, uh, uh, she's Sachs a best-selling speaker? author, speaker. Uh, she has online courses you can see in she her. She was on GMA just today. Good Morning America yeah, today. Yeah. I think it airs uh, right. We in, have in her book. I'm minutes. looking at her book at the front desk right there, The Long Game. She is fantastic. Legit. Um, again, so newsletter right at the top, street cred, right? And then above the fold, we see that she's a member of Business Thinkers, 50, top 50, uh, a New York Times quote, and then uh, voted number one communication coach in the world. So you get a very good idea right there. Oh, I met Dory Clark. Let's say you never heard of her. You shake her hand and she says, I'm Dory Clark and I'd love to speak at your event, perhaps. And they go home and they go and they come to her website. And again, what's the goal of the website? Let people know what you're offering and make sure that you're legit. This speaks legitimacy. Not only because I built it, I did, but uh, because <laughs> she's got the content, right? She's got the, the speaking testimonials, all of it here. Here are her best-selling books with little bouncy things Aww, when you hover. I love a little bouncy thing. But uh, she has a courses area where you can see her offerings. And some of these are more in person and some of them are built on Thinkific. So, you know, I get a little bit wary. Unless you're gonna go Kajabi for everything or something like that, I am wary of putting all your eggs in one basket. And even with something like Kajabi, like no offense to them or anybody else, but we don't know what they're gonna do in three years. They might double their prices. And if you have your website and your courses and your videos and everything there, it's going to be a lot harder to migrate off and switch. Or they might get gobbled up by a competitor and sunsetted, right? Like what was exactly, um, what right. was the, the like the the pictures? There was like Picasso or whatever. Any of those places where I have photos from like a decade ago yep. gone? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we just don't know. And so when I mean, that also goes into how often should I worry about updating my site, right? So every two, three, maybe four years. You want to make sure that your platform is still being maintained and legitimate. Ha are there new <laughs> trends in design? You know, um, if you go back to just five years ago and look at websites built then versus now, it's a very different kind of layout, literally. Um, and there's little things that you can do even, you know, we're not trying to, we're not trying to do flash and not the technology flash, but I'm talking about, you know, oh, I we want, thought we, you were talking about we the want, we flash. want people to come to the site and easily see and read the information that you're sharing. And if you want to fade in a few things just for a little effect, there's a little counter, right? But always less is more. The goal is not to show off that you can have a also menu. Also the goal is not to build it on flash. Right. Do no not flash, build it on please. Flash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a friend who went all in on Flash in like 2010, yeah. and that was, he regretted that dearly. You know, um, so just little things that you can do for, we, to we, show that we're in 2021, but you don't like, if you watch the menu, right, the menu changes, right? Little things like that. It's like this was not happening maybe that much several years ago. These are little things that show this is a, modern site that loads fast and that when I go when I go on mobile I'm going to be able to get that information like 70 percent of websites are being visited first on mobile uh could be off by a few percentage points but mobile is where it's at obviously if your site looks great on desktop but it looks it, it explodes into a, a mess and confusion on mobile then you need to rebuild your site you need to I, I think they need you, know, you to rebuild their site I'm available for consultations, of course. Um, you can should always they go reach to your out. website? RonPissarro.com is where I can be found for a uh, free consultation. And uh, I would always be happy to kind of talk through your website, give you some pointers, some tips, and then if I can be of help or point you in the right direction as to where to go, 
uh, nothing makes me happier than being able to help with that stuff. I, I, that is something I can confirm from spending a lot of time with Ron. Um, we know each other. Uh, we're actually going to be bringing Ron back in 2022 to have um, this kind of uh, presentation and office hours at Saxworks because we really want to um, facilitate what your best you, your best you in 2022. It just came up with a slogan and it rhymes. I'm pretty sure Taylor Swift could do something for that. Um, it's a little Tay Tay reference. Um, before we go, and before I thank Ron, uh, I just wanted to let everyone know that they can come into Saxworks and, uh, and enjoy this complimentary day pass. Um, this is a physical day pass, but we will actually post the QR code on Twitter, so um, on the Saxworks Twitter, so that you can scan it and book your complimentary day pass. You can also do so uh, at the, on the Saxworks website. Speaking of websites, there is um, a field for putting your email in. We respect your privacy as well. And uh, you can sign up for a company day pass. Please come visit us here in Brookfield Place, uh, downtown in New York, in our beautiful flagship location on the 10th floor of Saks Fifth Avenue. There's uh, Saks Works as the jewel atop that crown. I don't know, if, is that, uh, all right, I'll go with that. Um, and we just opened in Greenwich. Uh, it's a beautiful location in Greenwich. We'll, we'll be opening in Manhasset and Westchester in 2022. And, uh, and we're also going to be more dynamically online as well next year. So right. it's, um, it's going to be a good time no matter where you are. We will be so happy to see you. Ron, thank you for this. I l always enjoy seeing how passionate you are about um, excellent web design and about helping people <laughs> be more impactful and, uh, and more efficient with their online presence. It is my pleasure and has been my pleasure. I noticed my name is not here. So just so that you, if you're looking for me, uh, it's because it's it was in the P-A-S-S-A-R-O and then first name Ron, R-O-N, and you can find me that way. Um, <laughs> I because I mentioned the website. Web design is very important. Okay, um, I think we're done. I'm getting the wrap up sign. Uh, Thank you, everyone. Sorry for not putting your, uh, can I have a, get a high five to leave me hanging? Mm. Thank you, Ron Passar, for coming here to Saxworks today. Woo!